Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, Congressman David Schweikert will be in studio to discuss the latest from Capitol Hill. And we'll hear about an Arizona family that helped shape Western agribusiness and water policy. Those stories next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you. The Norton Trilogy is a new book that chronicles the lives and achievements of an Arizona family that helped define Western agribusiness and water policy. Arizona historian Jack August is here to tell us more about his book and a legacy left by three generations of John R. Norton's. It's good to have you back. Good yeah, to see you again. Nice to see you. Um, this, I want to get to the Nortons, all three of them here in a second, sure. but it seems like this is as much a book about Arizona and the West as it is about a family. It, it really is. In many ways, the, the Nortons uh, uh, are kind of a metaphor of the growth of uh, Arizona, the Southwest, and in many ways, it's a, it's a national story uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, the settlement and growth and development of the American West. Let's talk, who is John Ruddle Norton, the first? The first. Uh, he was uh, uh, a mule skinner, uh, a, a, a hard worker, uh, an equine specialist, but uh, he became W.R. Uh, Murphy's right-hand man, and uh, anyone that knows the old history of Phoenix knows that uh, Murphy, the Murphy Bridle Path is named after him, yes. uh, but uh, he helped uh, develop uh, uh, the early uh, kind of corporate water development before the Newlands Reclama Reclamation Act of 192 uh, was passed, and so he uh, helped, uh, for example, John Norton was the foreman on the Arizona Canal, uh, the 40-mile 40 long canal that uh, was a game changer. Yes. And it was completed in 1884, 85. Uh, and he was also um, one of the three people that discovered the location of what is now uh, Roosevelt Dam, was called the Tonto Reservoir site uh, uh, back in 1889. And he was there to see that dam dedicated, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was there when Theodore Roosevelt rode up and uh, they fired all the shots and he gave these wonderful speeches. Yes. So, so we have kind of a visionary, maybe a rough and tumble kind of a guy, uh, kind of a innovative sort of film. Yeah. John Ruddle Norton Jr., who was he? He uh, was the son. He was born in 1901 uh, and uh, uh, grew up uh, when Phoenix Union, uh, they, they would float uh, their inner tubes home from Phoenix Union down to their, their house uh, uh, back in the day. But uh, his father, John uh, R. Norton, died in 1923, and he was then, uh, I think, a sophomore at the University of Arizona. And so he had to come back and, and take over the debts, really. Uh, so he went through one bankruptcy, and then in 1929, he went through a second. So he had a rough time. But uh, through uh, grit and a, a little bit of luck, uh, he became uh, part of the produce gang, kind of the, the 1930 to 1970 period, which irrigated agriculture uh, in both the West Valley and East Valley uh, became uh, prominent. Indeed, a, a very big in produce, uh, yes. so much. And, and I think it's fascinating to see that success coming uh, during the Depression, during some pretty rough times. Boy, uh, very lucky. In fact, uh, he uh, moved out to Cache in Arizona and uh, ran a, uh, a grocery store so he could feed his uh, young child, John Norton III, who was born in 1929. So what a time to be born for uh, John Norton III, who happens to, to be uh, here with us still. Bef yeah, indeed. And before we get to him, as sure. for John Norton Jr., kind of went into cattle as well, correct? Yes, he, uh, he went into cattle when, uh, when things got better. World War II certainly uh, fixed a lot of things for uh, produce growers. And you have the likes of John Norton, uh, you have Kemper Marley, uh, the Martores, uh, Chet Johns, those names will be familiar to those people that were part of that dynamic economy uh, during the mid-century. How was Junior different from Senior? Well, Senior was uh, actually kind of a busybody. Uh, uh, so he, uh, he got involved in politics. He was, a kind of, he was from Kentucky originally, uh, and a state's rights uh, kind of Democrat tried to rival Carl Hayden back in the day. Uh, and then John R. Uh, Norton Jr. wasn't as politically active, but active enough that he was still a Democrat, but uh, he had a little bit of FDR fatigue, and by 1940, uh, he becomes the head of uh, Democrats for Wilkie uh, in 1940, and, uh, and uh, he... Uh, the shift is the on. The shift is on. Yes, yeah. indeed, which brings us to John Norton III, who was, what, a, a Stanford-educated rodeo writer? I yes, mean, yes. Well, his mother went to Stanford. His father... Uh, he had a choice and he wanted to major in agriculture. At the time, Stanford didn't have uh, an ag degree. Uh, and so he came back to the U of A, uh, was a very good student, uh, studied agricultural economics, uh, 
uh, business, but animal husbandry, and John knew that industry and still does, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, back and forth. And uh, so he uh, went into that field uh, with, a, with a stint. He was a rodeo, rodeo rider. In fact, he was captain of the U of A rodeo team and won lots of awards. And, you know, the, uh, the, the cover photo is uh, a picture of John roping a calf down at the U of A at the yeah. P. Martinez Ranch back in 1950. Isn't that something? Yeah, and great. again, focused on modern farming and, and crop diversity. I mean, the, the, these they were all very much a product of their time because technology was really starting to ramp up. Oh, it, re it really did. And, uh, and John, uh, soon, uh, John Norton III realized that uh, Arizona and central Arizona, he was farming and all those guys, that, that the wells were going dry. And so many Arizonans went to the other side of the river where the perfected rights, the Colorado River, were preeminent. Uh, that's Blythe, the Palo, Palo Verde Irrigation District. So John, in 1955, after serving a stint, John III, after serving a stint in uh, the Korean War, returned, realized he couldn't make a, a living as a rodeo rider and, and, and with all the cattle uh, interests up in northern Arizona that the father had grown, John Jr., uh, he decided to uh, take a chance in Blythe and spent 17 years from 1955 to 72 developing that area as his base point, but he grew that business all the way to northern California, southern California, west Arizona, yeah. the uh, Aguila area, uh, New Mexico, Colorado. He became probably the biggest uh, agribusiness titan in the American Southwest. And with that kind of resume, also served in the Reagan administration, correct? Yes, he became uh, the head of a, a group of uh, organizations like the Western Growers of America, the United uh, Fruit and Vegetable Growers, and he uh, made some innovative changes and actually changed some of the laws and he became uh, very influential nationally. And by the time uh, of Reagan's second administration in 1984, he asked John Norton to serve as Deputy Secretary of Agriculture. And uh, it was back in the day when uh, we had a mixed delegation of Senator Goldwater, Senator DeConcini, Congressman Udall, but everyone from the delegation rallied around him. Uh, the Democrats were then in control of the Senate and uh, he went through a rather uh, difficult or unusual set of uh, hearings uh, to be uh, confirmed, but he ultimately uh, was confirmed. And again, he is still with us. How does he differ from junior, differ from senior? Well, he shares uh, with the senior, he shares uh, uh, his political engagement, though he never ran for elective office. Uh, he served and uh, given the fact that they were very, very good uh, business people, both the junior and the third, uh, John uh, now uh, supports candidates uh, like perhaps my, who, the person who preceded me, uh, Congressman Swikert, and the Goldwater Institute. He's uh, a supporter of that organization. At the same time, uh, John has been very philanthropic with the University of Arizona, the Norton School down there, mm -hmm. uh, the Phoenix Art Museum, uh, a variety of health care initiatives, St. Joseph's Hospital and others. Why isn't the Norton name better known throughout. I would imagine in Southern Arizona, the two, because of the U of A connections, uh, the name would ring a bell. But why isn't this name better known? I think uh, one of the reasons is that, that, that none of them, I think in Arizona, uh, they, none of them ran for elective, well, they ran for elective office, John Sr., but he, he, was, uh, he was, I think he won uh, once the 1896 election for county supervisor. Uh, after that, that was the end of his political career. He was, he was poking around. But I think because uh, they did not uh, attain uh, elective office, uh, they served kind of behind the scenes and supported uh, other political and economic agendas. Well, and that obviously makes for a good subject. If, if there's an important family out there that hasn't had this kind of attention, for an author, this is a gold mine. But, really but, but why did you decide to write about well, it? Well, I, I uh, had, uh, well, one, uh, some people approached me about it, mm -hmm. uh, and it was an untold story, and I think that's one of the things that. Uh, historians uh, and uh, nonfiction writers and even fiction writers do is that they they find a story that has not been told uh, and uh, this was really a compelling one over three generations uh, uh, starting from the ground up John R. Norton uh, senior had nothing he was a he helped grade the Atlantic uh, uh, Pacific Railroad across to Kingman from Albuquerque uh, and then later uh, uh, actually later on helped uh, develop Grand Avenue. That was another W.J. Murphy scheme and he was one of the foremen in developing Grand Avenue back at the turn of the 20th century to, to open up the western uh, uh, area of Maricopa County to uh, produce development. 
So with this in mind, did anything change as you were researching this family and as you were doing your writing? Did you have kind of one image here and wind up with one image there? Yes, yeah, it, it really changed and it was really very, very surprising. Uh, uh, and also, uh, another th again, the, the theme of, uh, of growth, economic development, uh, resolve. Uh, you know, this is a, a very hostile environment and all three John Nortons struggled uh, in their own separate ways and, and uh, distinctive ways uh, to uh, forge an existence and forge a living here in the American Southwest. And so uh, by the time John Norton III is at mid-career, um, and it was back in the day when I think there was much more kind of political civility, uh, you have uh, John Norton advising then-Governor Bruce Babbitt or uh, uh, advising Senator Dennis DeConcini, uh, getting along well with Congressman Morris Udall. Uh, both of the, they shared a good sense of humor, for example, those two. Uh, and so uh, that's, you know, that's one of the takeaways that came as, as things changed and grew. Well, and, and when reading the book, one of the takeaways that I got was this is not a family allergic to hard work. No, no. Uh, yes. 16 hour days. Yes. And, and uh, as, uh, as a kid, I think one time John Norton, the third, uh, told me that his dad, even though they had a ranch in Seligman and he worked from age 14 every summer as soon as school was out, he went up there and worked with a cowboy and learned how to herd cattle, that his dad never let him go to the Prescott Rodeo days because uh, it, it was just too much fun, perhaps. <laughs> wow. Well, great work on this. Congratulations on the book, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Tomorrow on Arizona Horizon, our weekly update of the state legislature with the Arizona Capital Times, and we'll hear from Care of the Soul author Thomas Moore about his new book on creating a religion of one's own. That's tomorrow at 5.30 and 10 on the next Arizona Horizon. That is it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thanks so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.